Thank you for joining me today. As you can see, I'm in the garage, freezing my ass off, working on the Rally Mini. But that's not the focus of today's video. Instead, I'm going to talk about something that many of us who rally are constantly dealing with. How do we keep costs down so we can drive more? Before we get into it, I do ask that you click the subscribe button, and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give it a thumbs down. All right, let's get into this. Number one, get a common and reliable car. Look at what cars make up most rallies. You're gonna see Subarus, Fiestas, and older BMWs. There are going to be others scattered in, but these are some very common vehicles that you'll start seeing. Now this means that there are lots of parts available, and there's lots of advice from people who have already built these. You don't have to make as many expensive mistakes. Now with these cars, you wanna keep them as OEM as possible. Whether you want to admit it or not, they do make enough power stock, and this will make maintenance a hell of a lot easier. Plus, the more common they are, the more availability of these OEM parts there is. And, because these are common as rally cars, you will find more used rally cars that you can buy. And that really saves the most money, because in general, when you buy a race car, you can buy a used one for half what it costs to build. That's many thousands of dollars. But a great example of doing a cheap build is Grant Hughes of Rally.Build. He built an E36 BMW, and he has had over 500 competition miles on this car, making stock power, and it cost him less than $10,000. That is a hell of a value for a actual stage rally car. Now number two is actually a pretty easy way to save some money, is pay entry fees early. If you miss the early registration deadline, that's going to cost you some money. For example, when I did Rally Colorado, I did a one-day regional event, and that cost, because I missed early registration, almost the same as the full two-day regional. I could have done a lot more miles for almost the same amount of money. Now the third big tip is get the tow setup that you need, not necessarily the one that you want. You're going to find many trucks available for under $10,000. You can find old diesels, old gas V8s. They will haul a lot. You're just going to be missing some of the amenities of newer vehicles, but they'll get the job done. Now, another way to get around buying a tow vehicle in general is see if you have a friend who has a truck you can borrow. And if they have a trailer you can borrow, even better. Uh, I personally do this, my co-driver, he has a truck, he has an enclosed trailer, so we use that. And speaking of trailers, flatbed trailers are great. I mean, you know, there's some downsides that the, the race car is exposed, but they're lightweight, so you don't need as powerful of a vehicle to tow them, and they're a lot cheaper. And on the flatbed route, you could actually rent one from U-Haul. They do that. Now the fourth main point is to travel smart. Pick nearby events. There's actually a rally map online that you can go to and it shows the location of all events in North America. I'm going to provide a link for that in the description below. Definitely check that out. That is a huge resource. Part of traveling is eating. Pack a cooler. When you eat out, when you eat at restaurants, that's a lot of extra money. If you can pack some sandwiches, that's going to save you a lot. But I do get it, you know, save up for at least one meal because you're you're gonna want to hang out with other people at the rally and not everybody is eating sandwiches out of the bed of their truck now when you're traveling you're gonna need a place to sleep go cheap if you can camp camp there's lots of times campgrounds nearby downside of this you may not get the greatest sleep uh, that depends on you i i really don't know your situation and how well you do with that but it is an option now if you can't camp out, check out budget motels, stuff like Motel 6, Super 8. I personally love these, I'm not very picky on quality, I just want a bed that I can sleep in. The reason I'm traveling is to race, not to sleep, so it's really just uh, as long as it gets the job done, it's good. I personally do not want to spend $150 plus a night on a room when I don't really care about that room. Now, of course, make sure your teammates have the same frame of mind as you. They may not, so you'll just have to deal with that as it comes. Now, number five, and this I personally think is very obvious, but maybe not to you, know the limits of your driving. If you roll your car or hit a tree and you're on a budget, 
that might be the end of your season because it is really tough to recover from that. There's going to be a lot of costs that suddenly happen from the body shop. Now if you can do the work yourself, even better. Hopefully your cage stayed just fine so you don't have to worry about that, but it is a serious thing to remember. Me personally, I'm not out there to win, I'm out there to have fun and just try not to come in last again. So I'm not going to drive my car at the risk of rolling it or going headfirst into a tree, or tail first if I'm doing things right. So if you are trying to figure out how to budget to actually go and rally, I hope this video helps you out. I really want to see you out on the stages. That's all I have for you today. 